nice to see you here again. It is Dr. Shannon Shea with a little bit of clarification for some confusing terms for behavior analysts. Uh, today, I'm going to go over a transitive conditioned motivating operation. So all the conditioned motivating operations are conditioned as the name implies, meaning that you have learned uh, <laughs> that this stimulus is necessary in order to gain reinforcement. Uh, things that are unconditioned as far as establishing operations go are um, hunger, temperature being too hot, too cold, pain, um, sex, all these, uh, you know, like animal things that we all do and we all seek out when we're in a deprivation state or uh, there's too much of it, we want to change it. Those are unconditioned. Conditioned is we've learned it which is most things for, um, for people because we learn lots of stuff. So even if it starts unconditioned, it'll end up conditioned. Anyway, a transitive condition motivating operation is learned and it's a motivating operation, meaning that it temporarily increases or decreases the value of a stimulus. If it's uh, a motivating operation, it increases and uh, abolishing operations decrease. So motivating, meaning it's increasing. Condition, we learned it. Motivating operation increases value temporarily of a stimulus um, and the stimulus is transitive. Uh, so what do we mean by that? It means that it is a thing that you need to get the thing you really want. So for example, a good example of a CMOT would be if I um, haven't seen my boyfriend in a year because of COVID, right? And he's flying in today and I'm going to go pick him up from the airport. I would have a powerful, powerful motivation to find my car keys right now because I need to leave and I'm really excited to see him. And the car is what I want so I can go see my boyfriend, but I need the keys to get the car to work. So temporarily, those keys will be very reinforcing to me, but only so I can start the car. Um, the keys by themselves don't offer any reinforcement on their own. A good way to think about if something's a CMOT is if someone gave it to you at any other time, I was just like, oh, here's car keys, like while I was recording this video or cooking dinner, it would be confusing. You'd be like, why, why would I want this? this you know, that, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, if someone was just like, here's a spoon while you're sitting at your desk at work, you'd be like, that is very weird because there's no motivating operation in place for a spoon. Uh, so it would just be bizarre. But if you were taking out ice cream from the freezer in a bowl and someone's like, oh, here's a spoon, you'd be like, thank you so much because there's a motivating operation in place for the spoon. Again, you don't want the spoon because you love spoons or you find spoons reinforcing. You want ice cream because we all love ice cream, uh, but you do need the spoon to get the ice cream. So a CMOT is transitive. It's part of a chain and it's, it's the middle part that gets you to the last part and the end is what you really want. So the example Jack Michael used in almost all of his examples of this is um, a screwdriver is only reinforcing when you need to screw something in or unscrew it. Um, but that's, you know, just so I could throw some other examples out there. Um, it's, it's anything that is momentarily reinforcing to get the thing you really want. But the item in and of itself does not really provide reinforcement. It provides reinforcement because you can then go access the reinforcer you were hoping for. So that is CMOT. I hope that uh, helps clear it up. I will do reflexive and surrogates in the next week or so. Um, so thanks. Hope you guys have a good day. Mm -hmm.